This is the HPT. Sit right down. Put on your poker face. You with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game. Talk trash all you want. To me, it's all the same. You won't leave with much when you come in second place. And I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack on cry. Mama, cause I'm sending you back I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Hello everyone and welcome to the HPT I'm James Larson joined by professional poker player Mr. Robert Williamson III This week, Robbie, we're in St. Louis, Missouri right here at the River City Casino and Hotel We had a prize pool of almost $416,000. Tonight, someone's going to go home really happy. Really happy is one thing, but 95,000 reasons happier, that's even better. And we've got a couple of regulars here on the HBT. We've got Ryan White, we've got Paul Falig, and we've also got Sean Roberts, the man, the myth, the legend. Speaking of Sean Roberts, he's got more wins on the HBT than Ryan and Paul do combined. It's gonna be an exciting night and we're glad you joined us here on the HPT. Now we've been coming to the St. Louis area for years and we've given out over $4 million in main event prize pool money. We're planning on doing more of that right here tonight. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the chip counts and take a peek at what we're playing for. With over 415,000 in this prize pool, James, 95,645 first place money, and that's what these players are aiming for. Chip counts look like this. Jason and Paul up top in the middle of the pack. Phil and the other Paul, but don't count out Sean Roberts. He's trying to win his fourth HPT title. That's right, number four for Sean Roberts. We'll see if he can do it tonight here on the HPT. We're glad everybody joined us. We're playing 1530 with a 4K, and we're broadcasting from the River City Casino and Hotel right here in St. Louis, Missouri. Action is folded around to the one seat of Cullen, looks down at five deuce. He's gonna get out of the way, now over to Mike in the two seat. And Mike's gonna fold, as does Ryan. Action now on Jason in the four seat, looks down at ace tray. Got some well-dressed uh, players here at this final table. You don't usually see this for poker players. Uh, all ties and jackets and... Unbelievable. Jason's gonna raise the 65,000. Sean Roberts gets out of the way. Call. And now Paul B looks down at Ace King. He's going to make the call. Just a call there. Hmm. I think I might have had to find out where I was and put a little raise in right there. Action over to Phil now in the seventh seat. Looks down at seven tray. He's going to fold. So we'll go heads up now to the flop. Paul B and Jason. Ace King against Ace Trey. And the first hand of the night, the flop is 10 6 4 Rainbow. And that's the problem by not re-raising pre-flop. Now the original raiser gets to open and lead this pot, and a uh, good chance here. He's just going to take this down. So Paul checks. Jason bets 80,000. Action back over to Paul B. Two Pauls at the table. Paul Belkin is 50 years old. He's only got $375 invested in this main event. Another success story from our qualifier system. You can join us here at one of these events. Log on to our website at hptpoker.com. And now a raise by Paul up to 180,000. I'll tell you what, he did do the raise, but on a different street than I would have. I would have raised pre-flop. He makes a sneaky raise. You know, a lot of times when there's only one card 10 or higher, the player behind you did not hit the flop. And Paul thinks he might have the best hand, but he's got some fold equity. Oh my gosh. Wow, I like wow. this play. Jason with a re-raise to 405,000. Well, part of the problem was Paul didn't tell a consistent story and he got punished for not telling that story where Jason might believe it. Wow, what a hand here. Our first hand of the night. Jason is gonna win. He's 40 years old. He's a roofer with over $20,000 in lifetime earnings. It's his first HPT final table, his third HPT cash. He's only got $575 invested in this. The winner tonight will go home with over $95,000. Truly life-changing cash here on the HPT. Over to Sean Roberts, guy who's made a lot of money here on the HPT, Robert. I'll tell you what, he's ran good, played good. Once again, I've always say this, but that's a deadly combination, James. Eight final tables and three victories, trying to make it four tonight. Action folded around to the one seat 
of Cullen. He's going to release his hand. Now over to Michael in the two seat. He's 27 years old, professional poker player with over 300,000 in lifetime earnings. And it says run good on his jacket. I'll tell you what, he's decided to try to run good. He's taken queen jack for all in. Wow, all in with his queen jack suited in diamonds. Well, he's got a problem here. He's the short stack, and Sean's going to insta-call. Sean makes this call, trying to knock out our first player of the night. He's ahead. It's ace-queen against queen jack. All Mike can do is take a big drink of his lager there here at this final table, and Sean's hoping his hand holds up. Well, Mike needs some help on this flop. And speaking oh, of help, wow. there you go right there. Ace King. I, think I, wow. I, think I understand why it says run good on his jacket. Ace King, five, all diamonds. He flops the nuts. He flops the nuts, not to mention he's got a royal flush draw as well. And Sean needs runner, runner, or Mike's going to get a double up. Turn cards, the deuce of spades, that's not going to help. So Mike stands up. He's not going anywhere. His quest to be our next HPT champion continues here from the River City Casino and Hotel. I'll tell you what, he was our short stack entering play today, so he really did need this double up. I want to remind everybody watching this show, if you think you have what it takes to play right here on the national stage, why not give it a shot? Check out our webpage at www.hptpoker.com. We'll be right back right after these messages. Welcome back to the HBT. It's James Larson and Robert Williamson III. We broadcast this week from St. Louis, Missouri, right here at the River City Casino and Hotel. And I got to say, St. Louis is kind of a hotbed for poker, Robert. We had a huge prize pool. The players came out of the woodwork, James, and uh, you know what that means. Big bucks up top. Yeah, first place, almost $96,000. So somebody's going to leave here very happy. Jason on top, right behind him, though, Ryan and Paul in the middle of the pack. The other Paul and Phil, and down there at the bottom, Sean Roberts and Vadim. Vadim needs to double up, or his tournament life is going to be gonzo. First person eliminated tonight, 10,439. But up top, our champion will go in with $95,645. Whole lot of cash tonight here on the HPT. Action is folded around to the man in the jacket. He's Jason. He's going to raise it up with the HPT special. The King Queen's going to raise the seventy-five thousand. Well, the man in the jacket is uh, so far started as our chip leader and increased his chip lead. So he's kind of separating himself from the pack right now, James. Folded around to the one seat of Cullen. Looks down at one six, and another six, just like that. Pocket sixes. He's just going to make the call here. So it's heads up. Jason the Razor with his HPT special, the King Queen going up against the pocket sixes of Cullen. About a 50 50 uh, scenario here, Robert. Sure is, but unfortunately for Cullen, it's a really small pair. It's a lot of scare flops. And this is one of them Queen Queen four. Uh, Cullen's going to be in uh, payoff mode, I'm thinking, most likely here. Cullen bets 150000 Jason loves it. He flopped three of a kind. Well, Jason's trying to consider, do I raise now? Do I flat call? You know, I can make a case for either one. Jason's going to make call. a call. I like it. I like it. His plans for the cash, by the way, he wants to buy a boat. We'll see how big a boat he can buy here. Whether yes. that's ninth place or fifth place or first place money. Jack of Hearts comes on the turn. We'll see if Cullen slows down. And he is. He's going to check it over to Jason. Well, by Jason just flat calling there, he gave himself a chance to get called here on the turn. He just needs to get his bet sizing right. Maybe about half the pot, a little less. Make it look like it might be a bluff. Half a million chips in there already. And he is going to make a, a bet. It's a 300,000 chip bet. A little more than I would have bet because it it's going to be hard for any hand that's not a real hand to call. And Cullen sniffs that one out. And uh, Jason wins a nice pot all the same. But uh, maybe it's a little less there, James. He might have got a payday. Jason's got a great life. He says in his bio, he gets up at noon and goes to bed at 2 a.m. I mean, this is uh, this is a poker player's life. I, I was going to say, you. that's poker player hours. <laughs> it's like a banker keeps certain hours, poker players keep certain hours. Action continues here from St. Louis, Missouri, River City Casino and Hotel. It's great to be back here in the heartland. A lot of Cardinal fans hanging around the rail, I know that. Sure are. They love their baseball team here. Actions folded around to the one seat of Cullen. He's going to raise the 80,000 with his ace-queen. I can't say that I blame him. 
Now over to Ryan. He's from Leewood, Kansas. He's 42 years old. His grandparents taught him how to play poker. You gotta learn it at some point in your life. You might as well learn from people that have a lot of wisdom. And people that are older generally, they claim to have a lot of wisdom. He's gonna fold now over to Jason. Jason's on the button, looks down at pocket sevens. The star of our show tonight, he's catching everything. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, two sevens right there, very defensible. I think I just flat though, I don't think I'd like a raise. And what, then again, what do I know? I mean. Kind of running over the table. He's going to re-raise to 476,000. That's enough to have Cullen all in if he makes the call. Yeah, I think Cullen has to call in that spot and just hope that he has him dominated or that he has the classic coin flip in. And he does. He has the coin flip. So it's ace, queen, couple of big overs for Cullen going up against the pocket sevens. And the flop is king, ten, tray, rainbow. Well, not a lot of help for Cullen, but he does have a gut shot straight draw. So any jack, queen, or ace will help him here a lot. And look at that, the queen of spades. Oh, and that's a great card for Cullen. Has a great chance of doubling up, but a seven for Jason could still eliminate him, and he doesn't get it. It was close, it was the six of diamonds, so a big double up there for Cullen. Wow, he looks very relieved as he stands sure up, does. takes a deep breath. And only merely a flesh wound for Jason, who has been running over this table up till now. Cullen very happy. He's been playing for 15 years. He won 13,000 in a HPT prelim a couple of years ago at this very same property. Action will start here with Sean Roberts. He's gonna fold, as does Paul B. Now over to Phil with the shades. He's got the white shades on, he folds. So far it's uh, been more like slim shady because he's had to fold every hand. Folded around now to the one seat of Cullen. Recently doubled up, looks down at Ace Stray. He's gonna get out of the way. Now over to Mikey on the button, Queen seven. Now the computer hand, not enough from the button. Michael's goal was to always play on TV. Well, you're doing it right now, Michael. Congratulations on making our final nine. Well, Ryan White reaching for chips with ace-10 of diamonds. He's in the small blind. He's going to raise it up with his ace-10. Now over to the big blind of Jason. That king ain't suited against the small blind. I'd probably defend there. And you're running well. You know, I mean, you're... you're well, table image is important. Exactly, exactly. So heads up now, A6 tray is the flop. It's a rainbow. Action will be on Ryan. And I got a feeling here if Ryan leads at this pot, it's his. Jason's just going to surrender this. And Ryan is going to make a bet. 85,000 chips. Look at this, Jason. He's, like, well, he's going to make the call here. Uh, what do I know? Uh, okay. By the way, Ryan, last year at Golden Gates, he got third place, went home with $93,000. Eight of clubs now in the turn. Once wow. again, Ryan's first. That's kind of a dangerous card for Jason because now he actually has a pair and it's second pair. So uh, he might be in uh, the what I call the slot machine mode, ching, 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 where you have to pay someone off. So Ryan's gonna bet 110,000. Boy, is Jason thinking about a raise here? Well, that is a really weak, smallish type bet. It's so important in poker tournaments when you accumulate chips, Robert. You want to hold on to them, though, too. <laughs> yes, that is actually one of the keys to winning these tournaments. Look at this, a raise to 220,000. Ryan loves every minute of this. Well, I don't think Ryan's thinking about folding. I think it's it's a decision of, do I call, do I raise? Ryan just $375 invested in this HPT event. Great return on his investment. That's what Let I me call tell you. Great parlay, James. Can you imagine if he wins this thing, he'll turn 375 into just over 95,000. Any banker would be proud to have that return on their money. So Ryan looking down at Jason's chips, trying to make his decision, figuring out He's going to re-raise or just make this call. Because we know folding is probably not an option right now. No, I don't think it was ever a consideration. So he makes the call. We go to the river card. And the river card is the deuce of clubs. A third club hits the board. Well, that should slow both of these players down. Well, I, I guess not Ryan. He, he just shoves all in. Ryan's all in. And now a fold by Jason. So Ryan's going to win that hand. And I got to say, he's picking up some steam at this final table. I'll tell you what, so far it's been the rise of Ryan. Watch out, Jason Blevin. We'll have more exciting final table coverage right after this break. You're watching the HVT. Yeah.
Now, every year we team up with Card Player Cruises for a week-long trip at sea. If you're looking for a fun vacation, this is the perfect getaway. Every day is an adventure. I've been on two of these cruises and had an absolute blast. Retiree Eileen Rock gets the award for the most excited player at the final table. Let's see what Eileen had to say. My name is Eileen Rock, and I live in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. I play three or four times a week. I think it's fabulous, and the excitement I'm holding back, shaking, being at the final table of HPT, it's great. You too could join us for an exciting poker cruise aboard a luxury ocean liner. Card Player Cruises offers the most poker action, most limits, and the best tournaments at sea. And the poker is just the beginning. It's truly unbelievable how much there is to do on these ships. For all the details, including a list of upcoming cruises and prices, visit www.cardplayercruises.com. Robbie, there are the chip counts. I'll tell you what, uh, Ryan White closing the gap with Jason Blevin and uh, Paul Cullen and the other Paul uh, still right up there in contention. Don't count Sean Roberts out just yet. And Mike and Vadim there on the bottom. I haven't seen Vadim play a hand yet. He's waiting for his opportunity, hoping to double up and keep his tournament hopes alive. So a nice little prize pool this week, Robert. We had $415,880, up top $95,645, so a huge payday here on the HPT. And folks, we want you to join us at one of our events. It's very simple, log on to hptpoker.com. We crisscross the entire country 12 months out of the year. Check us out at hptpoker.com. Got a raise now by Paul F. He's going to raise with his king jack of clubs. He's going to raise to 85,000. Well, he's just checking out to see if he's on a little run here, a little streak. Action over to Ryan now in the small blind. He's going to fold. We'll see if Jason defends. He's got queen eight of diamonds. Oh, well, that's definitely in his defensing uh, range. So Jason really got off to a hot start here at this final table. He sure did, but he's cooled off since then. Heads up now, Jason and Paul. Bob is king, queen, and a tray. Couple of hearts. A little something for both players. Top pair for Paul. Second pair for Jason. Jason's going to check. A bet is now 85,000. Jason's going to make the call. Paul has got to like his hand so far, just betting and getting called there. Turn card, another heart, this time the deuce of hearts, and Jason's going to check. That might slow Paul down there, he does take a free card. Both players checking that turn. River card now is the five of clubs. No help, but let's see if Paul has the courage, I call it courage, James, to make a little value bet here, go, go to Value City. So a check by Jason, action on Paul. You caught that, right? Value City. I, I, you're I, in I, River you're City. in River City. I like it. I like it. It's a bet of 170000 And boy, I see Jason just check calling the last three hands. See if he does it again. Yeah, I got a feeling he's in payoff mode. He's got the chips in his hand. He's going to do it. He's going to make the call. And he's going to see that he's beat. His queen's beaten by Paul's Kings and another pot going the other direction. You know what I say? Curiosity, sometimes curiosity kills the cat. Like we've talked about before, Jason off to such a hot start, but boy, if he keeps dumping chips, he might be the first one eliminated. You never know. It's James Larson and Robert Williamson III broadcasting from the River City Casino and Hotel here in St. Louis, Missouri. Action is folded around to Paul. He's gonna fold now over to the one seat of Cullen. Cullen's 35 years old, 25K in lifetime earnings. He folds over to Mike now in the two seat. King nine in late position. He's in the cutoff, one off the button. Mike's a huge St. Louis Cardinals fan, as are a lot of people around here at River City. And now an all in by Mike with his King nine. I don't mind that with his stack size. I, I might have just open raised, but I might have moved all in myself. So now a fold by Ryan, and Jason's asking for a count. He's in the small blind. Jason does have a pretty liberal defending range. Not going to be bullied around by somebody. I feel like Jason's played every hand tonight. It feels that way, Robert. Basically because he has played most every hand. So 355,000 is the amount that Jason needs to call. 
Probably any ace would call here. Let's see what he's got. And Jason's going to make the call with pocket eights. Oh, now I see why he was uh, taking his time thinking about it. So Sean's going to get out of the way in the big blind. We flip over the cards. Jason's going to see right now he's in the lead with his two red eights going up against Mike's suited king nine. This could be it for Mike if his hand doesn't improve. I'll tell you what, though, Mike's going to actually be happy now. He's got a coin flip, and he didn't have to be that well. He just More than like a coin that. Flip. The flop comes out king, jack, ten. They're all spades. Mike doesn't care. He paired his king. And now the turn card is the ten of diamonds. So Mike can dodge only an eight to help Jason, or Mike's going to get a nice double up here. And the river card is the tray of spades. So four spades on the board. Neither player had a spade. The two pair, kings and tens. That's the winning hand for Mike. A double up for him, and the story here was Jason early. Now the guy just can't catch a break. And when we come back, we'll have more exciting final table action. You're watching exclusive final table coverage as we broadcast from St. Louis, Missouri, here at the River City Casino and Hotel. It's James and Robert. Chip counts look like that. Jason's up top still, but it's been kind of a rough uh, go for him yeah, here as of late. It's been a rocky ride, James, for sure. And I'll tell you what, and this last segment has been about the rise of Paul Faley. You're exactly right about Paul. His stack swing up 845000 A lot of money on the line tonight, up top at 95645 Minimum cash right now, 10000 1,439. Action is on Ryan. He's going to fold, as does Jason. Now over to Sean Roberts. Looks down at King 5. He's going to fold, as does Paul B. Now over to Phil. Haven't seen much out of Phil tonight. Looks down at Queen 9. He's got his shades on, the red shirt. He wants to say hi to his girlfriend, Mandy. And I always warn these guys, if you're going to give shout-outs to the girlfriends, got to make sure you treat them right and you're still dating them as the show airs down the road from when the event is. It's going to lead to some problems for sure. Hopefully they're still happy. So Phil's going to raise to 100,000. Action now over to Paul F. in the nine seat. And he's and gonna he push jumps all in. in. Yeah, raises to 510,000. Phil quickly makes the call. I bet the other players are a little surprised to see these hands. Ace eight versus queen nine. Phil all in with queen nine. It's the best hand I've, I've seen in forever, so, I mean. Phil Gilruth is 42 years old. He's the VP of sales. He got into this thing on a $200 satellite. And the flop is oh, nine eight there. Top pair for Phil. He out flopped Paul. Paul won his first poker tournament when he was 15 years old. Him and his friends got fake IDs to buy alcohol. He used his to get into a poker tournament. Oh, and look at that turn card. Wow. Eight of hearts on the turn. That puts Paul in a commanding lead here. Phil's going to get knocked out if he doesn't catch a nine. And the river card is the jack of diamonds, and that's going to do it. Paul's going to win the hand. Phil has been eliminated. Shaking his head, doesn't like it at all, but not for nothing. He's going to go home with $10,439. So our first casualty here on tonight's HPT episode. Now eight players remain. They all want to be our next HPT champion. And up top, a nice payday, just under $96,000. All right, Robert, I've got to say, it took a long time in tonight's episode to lose our first player. The longest I can remember in a good while, I'll tell you what. All right, the action continues here from River City. Sean Roberts' first act, he's from Springfield, Missouri. Eight final tables, seven or eight. I lose track, my friend. I hear you, and he raised from what I call the new button. Under the gun seems to be the new button for these players. Raises to queen nine, and now Vadim says, it's time for me to get in the middle. It's time to gamble up. He's got an ace, let's do it. A fold now by Mike over to Ryan. He looks down A6. Well, the one factor that I, if I'm Ryan right now, I put into this, into my thinking, the team has played really tight. There's too many hands he can have here that have me dominated. If I'm Ryan, I'm folding this hand. Ryan's got over 100000 in career earnings, only $375 invested in this event. He's going to fold. And now Jason looks down at 10-5 of clubs. He's in the big blind. It's 135000 more for him to call. But he's got to be thinking, I haven't been running that well lately. Maybe we'll just muck this hand. So Sean Roberts is going to make the call. They table their hands, and Vadim says, hey, I got an ace, I'm in the lead, but you never want to be up against Sean Roberts for your tournament life. Yeah, well, you know, for the look on his face right now, Vadim looks really disappointed. He's actually in the lead right here. 
And the flop is ace, eight, six, couple of diamonds. So good news here for Vadim. Sure is. I'll tell you what, now Sean's going to need runner, runner to eliminate him. And look, that's the first part. He needs either a nine or a queen. And if Vadim could be eliminated right here, and it's the oh. jack of spades, so he fades those cards. He's going to double up. So We've close. seen a lot of that at tonight's final table. These players, so just you can't eliminate them. So they close. keep hanging around. So I'll tell you what, and that actually puts Sean <laughs> into last place in chips, our former HPT champion. Vadim wins the hand. He's 35 years old from St. Louis, Missouri. He said wow. some of the worst days in his All life right. were playing blackjack. Some of the All best right. days in his life were when he quit blackjack. So oh, oh, it sounds oh. like you and I back in the day I, there, Robert. I thought you were going to say the best days were when he won playing blackjack. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's a gambler's mentality. Well, speaking of gambler's mentality, he's got them all back in the middle again with one of my favorite pocket pairs, pocket nines, and says, I'm ready to double up, maybe triple up. He sure is. We'll see if they hold up here for Vadim. We'll see if he gets called. I got to go, yeah. <laughs> Cardinals game is about to start. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a little gamesmanship there from Michael. Uh, you call it gamesmanship, I call it needling. He's going to fold now over to Ryan on the button, and he looks down at a real hand. He's got ace queen. Ryan makes the call, and Jason is going to fold. Now action over to Sean Roberts in the big blind. He's going to release his hand. So once again, we table him. Vadim is currently in the lead, pocket nines, but it's always tough going up against two big over cards. I'll tell you what, it looks like it's a coin flip, but how come it seems like when I've got the smaller pair, the coin flip always wins on their side? Seems like it always happens on the flop too, but not this time. Jack, seven, five, couple of clubs. So Vadim still looking good to double up for the second time in a row. Well, that opens things up a little bit. Gives Ryan a straight draw. So now a king, a queen, or an ace, but it's not a club. And it's the ace of diamonds on the river, ladies and gentlemen. The ace of diamonds. Ryan's going to win the hand, and that does it for Vadim. He's gone, going out in eighth place with just over $12,000. With the elimination of Vadim Clydeman in eighth place, we are one step closer to crowning the next HPT champion. We'll find out who that is right when we get back. Welcome back to the HPT. It's James Larson and Robert Williamson III. We're broadcasting from the gateway to the west, St. Louis, Missouri, right here at the River City Casino and hotel. Seven players remain. I want to talk about Sean Roberts. What's he got to do to take down his fourth HPT title? Well, James, first of all, he's got to have a little luck on his side. He hasn't been real lucky tonight, but secondly, he's got to keep showing patience and play his game. If he does that, he still can win this event tonight. We've got some news here to report from the chip count area. Ryan White now leading things. Alert, new chip leader, and also Paul Failing had a big round, as well as the other Paul, Paul Belkin. Sean Roberts, however, we talk about him a lot tonight on the HPT. He's trying to win his fourth title. You can see his stack swing going the wrong way. It's going south, and he needs to make a move here fast if he wants to win his fourth title. And these are cards to do that with. Sean Roberts looks down at big, slick, suited crazy stat about Sean Roberts. The last six HPT events he's played, he's final tabled four of them. That is truly a sick run. Now look at how he makes this raise. Interesting how he put his chips out there. I love it. Once again, another great play by Sean Roberts. He even shows the strength here, hoping to get somebody to read that as weakness. To raise the 225000 and now Paul F. is going to raise it up with his pocket nine. So stay tuned. We'll come back to Sean Roberts. But first we go to the one seat of Cullen, he's on the button, and he's gonna fold his hand. Now over to Mike, looks down at 10-8. He's gonna fold. Action is on Ryan, he's in the big blind with Jack-4. I think he's just gonna be happy to get out of the way on this one, he folds. So action back to Mr. HPT, Sean Roberts, and he's made his decision, he's in, all in. Ace King going up against the pocket nines. We'll see if Sean Roberts win this hand and continue his quest for his fourth HPT title. And the flop is king, wow. six, deuce, couple of diamonds. Wow, what a flop for Sean Roberts. Wow, only a nine of clubs can help Paul F. right now. 
And Paul not happy at all. It's the 10 of clubs. Comes on the turn. One street to go here. Huge hand unfolding here for Sean Roberts. And all Paul F. can do is scratch his forehead and wonder what happened. It's the Jack of Spades on the river. That's going to do it. Sean Roberts wins the hand. A pot of just under a million chips. And I've said this before on this TV show. That's not a guy you want to give more poker chips to. You're right about that, James. He's got a great track history. And I'll tell you what, I've played against him. He is one tough customer to play against. So another interesting stat about Sean Roberts, he got his first victory on the HPT January of 2010 in Oklahoma for 60,000. Then in 2013, he won another event in Oklahoma for 52K. And then last year, he won his third event. Guess where it was? Because I guess Oklahoma. Oklahoma. We'll see if he can win in another state here as we are in St. Louis, Missouri at the River City Casino. Paul's going to raise to 110,000 with his suited King 8. It's folded around now to the two seat. Uh, but Mike, he looks at his cards like I do. He's got that slow peel. I like it, but it doesn't make him look any better when it's 10-7. It's usually a low ball player. Right, it. right. Ryan is going to fold. Now over to Jason on the button. He's taking his time, it looks like. He's and he's got a of fives. He's got the Sammy Hagar, two red fives. If you're just joining us, Jason got off to a hot start. Thing, things cooled down. Haven't seen a whole lot of action out of him here recently as Paul B makes the call as well. But Jason hoping to improve here. He's got pocket fives. He leads right now over the other two players. And the flop is Chad Jack Queen. OMG. What a flop for Paul Belkin Jr. He flopped a full house. And it goes check, check, check. Turn card now, the three of hearts. And Paul B says, all right, maybe I'll throw some chips out here now. Well, Just even, a few anyway. Even better, this gives Paul F a flush draw. He's probably going to go for this bet. So the bet is 150,000. You're right, a couple of hearts on the board. So Paul F could make this call. He's reaching for chips. He's going to raise now to 300000 Paul B. loves this. Oh, man, I'm telling you what, you feel like a little kid in a candy store right now with your Paul Belkin. Jason gets out of the way, and look at Paul B. Paul B.'s thinking, oh, baby. So, Robbie, you got the nuts. What do you do here if you're Paul B.? I play back at him. I definitely raise. He's got to be on a drawing hand, and you want to punish him for drawing dead. All right, Paul B. reaching for chips. Paul Belkin Jr., Robert, he's 50 years old, and for him, poker is just a hobby. And now he's going to raise to 800000 I love that bet sizing. I think he has a chance of getting paid off by Paul F. here. It's Paul versus Paul. Paul F. with the Compton hat. Big decision to make. Huge pot. Almost 1.5 million chips. Wow. And he's going to fold. The full. I'll tell you what, that's a strong play by Paul F. But well played by Paul B. Paul B. Paul F. A lot of Pauls here tonight. A pot of just under 1.5 million chips. Well, Robert, so much on the line tonight. First place, 95645 But right now, minimum cash for seven is $14,556. We were able to do that this week at River City because of all the players that came out. We had a total prize pool of $415,880. Action continues here with Sean Roberts folding, as does Paul B. Now over to Paul F. And now a raise by Paul F. He's going to go up to 110,000 with his ace, queen, and diamonds. Action over to Cullen in the one. He folds. And you know, sometimes when you lose a hand, you get right back up on that horse. That's what Paul F. did right here. And now Mike with a mediocre hand. He's got the ace, 10, and sizing oh. up as an opponent. He might decide to get wow. him in the middle. You know what? With his stack size, I, th I think I might have shoved with that ace, 10. And he's going to fold. And now over to Ryan. I want to know what Ryan's listening in the headphones there. <laughs> right. I think we'll ask him on the break here. Could be Skid Row, maybe uh, L.A. Guns. I don't know. Maybe Nazareth. it's a classical kind of guy. Could be. You know? could be. It, could be a, it could be a book on tape. All right, we go to the flop now. And the flop is king, queen, deuce. It's a rainbow. Both players getting a piece of this, one with the queens, the other with and, the kings. Uh, Ryan decides to check his top pair. Paul slyly checks behind him with second pair top kicker. Turn card now is the nine of hearts. We'll see if Ryan decides to bet now. Well, it's got to go to Value Street. You know, we're in River City. Value Street on River City. 
Ryan got third place last year at Golden Gates in Colorado. Took home just over 93000 This is his fourth cash here on the HPT. He's going to bet 125,000 chips. And, you know, honestly, the way Paul F. has played this hand, I'm thinking I might have the best hand still, too. I'm definitely going to call here. I'm not going to raise and get too out of line, but I'm definitely going to make this call. Remember, both players check the flop. So the call is made now by Paul F. Pot of over a half a million chips. River card now is the five of diamonds. And once again, Ryan will be first to act. Well, Ryan's got to say, how much can I get from Paul F here? Because it feels like his hand is the best hand. Oh, he's going to make a nice little bitty bet. 150,000. Paul F has to call this. He has to call it. Paul forced to call well, I'd be very impressed if Paul F. can lay this hand down. And Paul Failing makes that call on the river. I'll tell you what, he didn't like it when the cards turned over. He's slowly leaking off his chips. The winner of the hand, a 42-year-old from Leewood, Kansas. His name is Ryan White. Still plenty of action coming up after this break. Don't go too far. You're watching the HPT. Welcome back to the HPT. It's James Larson and Robert Williamson III broadcasting here in St. Louis, Missouri at the River City Casino and Hotel. Up top, almost $96,000. How do you celebrate after a victory like that, Robbie? You know me, I'm a simple man, James. A big steak, a nice glass of wine, well, maybe a bottle, and that's enough for me. Seven players remain. We will crown a new champion this week right here on the HPT. Chip counts look like that. Ryan, Paul, and Jason up top, rounding out the bottom of the group, Paul, Cullen and Mike. Look at that stack swing by Paul Felix. Down 1.3 million I'm chips, he's my brother. Take some major hits this last little bit. James Larson and Robert Williamson with you tonight, broadcasting from River City here in St. Louis. Up top tonight, $95,645. Folded around to the two seat of Mike. Looks down at A6 of diamonds. Well, speaking of run, this is Mr. Run Good himself here. I think this might be enough for him to open this pot with a raise. Mike is 27 years old. He's from Louisiana, Missouri. I didn't know there was a Louisiana, Missouri. You mean Louisiana or Missouri? Louisiana, Missouri. I, well, I didn't know there was a Louisiana in Missouri. Either way, he's going to raise to 110,000 with his A6. Hold it around now to Sean Roberts. He's on the button. Well, this is what I call a button defense. King nine off, but you know, Sean's a good enough player. He can get away with these kind of defenses. So hard to read Sean Roberts. I've watched him so much here on this show calling the action. I can never get a read on the guy. Well, it's easy because I've got the whole cards, but ace, king, and a 10. It's a rainbow flop. Mike will be first. Well, Mike flops top pair. Sean flops second pair. Uh, usually in this situation, the ace comes out on top. But uh, wow. An aggressive play from Sean Roberts. He's not going to like what he sees here. So, yeah, we got a bet by Mike and a raise to get Mike all in by Sean. He makes the call. We flip over the cards. Sean Roberts doesn't like the news. Does not. He needs a king or a nine to go into the lead. Keep in mind, his name is Sean Roberts. Jack of spades well, now on the turn. Now he can get a queen to get half of his money back. You know, get get his share of this pot, 50%. Mike is all in, hoping his hand holds up for a spades. It will. He's going to double up at the expense of Sean Roberts. If anybody at this table can overcome it, Sean Roberts is the one. Folks, we want to remind you to come out and join us here on the HPT. All the information is on the webpage at hptpoker.com. We crisscross all over the country, and who knows, maybe you'll be playing for the life-changing cash. Lines are 25 50 with a 5K. Jason will fold. Now over to Sean Roberts. Looks on a queen 10. Sean Roberts is going to open here to 115,000 with his queen 10. Paul B is going to quickly make the call with an ace jack off suit. Yep, that's a good call. Now action. Over to Mike, looks down at 9 8 in the well, small blind. You know, and also in addition to being in the blind, it's getting pot odds now. It's got two, two people in the pot already. I'd probably call with the suited connector. He's going to make the call and now over to the big blind of Ryan. He's in seat number three. Still want to know what he's listening to, man. We got to ask him on the break. <laughs> Hasn't said a word to the players, though. He's kept kept to himself, kept very quiet. Very Just focused. playing this game. Very focused. He yes, makes yes. the call. We know that Ryan, of course, third place last year for 93000 at Golden Gate. So he, too, has some final table experience. Four players go to the flop. Comes out 10-9-4 rainbow. Michael will be first as he pairs his nine. 
and Sean actually flops top pair here, so the initial raiser flops the best hand. I suspect we'll see a bet from him. Mike checks over to Ryan. Ryan with a gutter ball straight draw. And he's going to check over to Sean. Sean's got the best of it so far. He's reaching for chips. He puts out a stack, 400,000. Paul B gets wow. out of the way. He bet almost a pot size bet there. He wants to take this pot down right now. Mike's going to get out of the way and action back to Ryan now with his gutter ball straight draw and runner runner flush draw. I tried to make it look as bluffy as possible. <laughs> Rare <laughs> words of advice from Sean Roberts. And look, Ryan actually took off his headsets first time this match, too. Yeah, first time is right. So Ryan is going to fold. Sean gets in the head of Ryan. He's going to win the pot of just under 900000 When we come back, we'll have more exciting final table action. You're watching the HPT. This is the HPT. I'm James Larson, joined by Robert Williamson III. We are at the River City Casino and Hotel right here in St. Louis, Missouri. Chip counts look like that. Ryan White in the lead right now. I'll tell you what, Mike and Sean making the biggest waves this last little bit. Both of them on the uptick, but uh, Ryan and Paul still up top. Up top tonight, speaking of cash, $95,645. Blinds, $25.50 with a 5K ante. So glad you joined us tonight here on the HPT. And I got to keep reminding you, follow us on the website, hptpoker.com. Find an event that will work for you, and maybe you'll be playing on national TV. All in. Got an all-in now by the one seat of Colin with his king, ten of clubs. He decides this is my opportunity. A little peculiar. Oh, late position, short stacked. Uh, but still, I'm like you. I don't like it. Why push it right there? Especially now when he runs into two tens. Yeah, ran him right into two tens by Mike here on the button. Ryan's going to fold from the small. Jason's going to release his hand from the big. So we'll table the hands. And Well, now that we tabled the hands, I have a question for you, James. If you run into aces, it's called running the bub saw. Is tens half the bub saw? This is kind of like, uh, you know, a hand saw, I guess, you know, because he uh, is in a little bit of trouble here. But he's got the one over card. He's got a couple of clubs. We'll see after the flop where he's at. I gotta do and not much changes. The flop comes out 864, couple of hearts, so Mike's still in the lead. And I'll tell you what, Cullen needs runner, runner clubs or a king to get out of this trap. Cullen at risk here. He's all in. Oh, right like that, but hold on. That also gives Mike a redraw. Now he's got a flush draw. Any heart gets him out of there. And also, there is one 10 left in the deck as well. I'd love to see his reaction again on replay. That was great when Cullen saw that turn card. And now we go to the river. It's the seven of spades. He's been safe. I love this guy's reaction at the poker table. He is very happy. Cullen, who's from Sullivan, Missouri, he's 35 years old. He's an electrician, loves the HPT. His favorite poker memory, he got to play with James Woods and Johnny Chan at the same table. Two great players, yeah, and uh, one's yeah, a little better he's actor he's than a, the other. He's a, he's a, little, <laughs> right. bit of, a little bit of percentage. There, a right. nice size pot but there for Cullen. Yeah. Over 1.2 million chips. Blinds are 25.50 with a 5K. Somewhat of a bad beat there for Mikey. I think I just saw the HPT Classic. I did see the HPT Classic. It's a fan favorite, the old King Queen. People get that, whether they're in position, out of position, they love to raise with it. They love to get chips in the middle. They love the King Queen, as does Ryan, as he raises to 115,000. We haven't actually heard a lot out of Jason Bliven lately. He does make the call. He's going to make the call with 6-4. Why not? It's a good blackjack hand to double down on. He's hoping that he can get lucky here. Sometimes you got to change up your play. We're seven-handed. He's going to do that out of position. Makes the call. Hoping to see a great flop. We're heads up now, Jason and Ryan. And the flop comes out. Ace, eight, seven, rainbow. Well, a gut shot draw for Jason and uh, a blank flop for Ryan. That's if you want to be really optimistic, Jason, go run a runner for a straight flush, but it's really pushing things. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very optimistic viewpoint, my friend. So Jason bets 125,000, and I like this play. Ryan's going to raise to 300K. You know, especially against a really aggressive player, you let them hang themselves sometimes. 
Jason a little miffed about this. Not real happy he got raised there, but he makes the call. I'm actually a little surprised he made that call, Robert. Yeah, I, um, with undercards to the board and only a gut shot, I don't think I make that call. So the turn card is the nine of clubs, a little something for everybody there. Both hands helped here. Now Ryan's got the nut flush draw. Jason with an open end straight draw. Action on Ryan. He's from Leewood, Kansas, 42 years old, over 100K in lifetime earnings. And he's all in, my friend. You know what I like most about that all in? He took his time. He made it look like weakness, and it's actually showing, trying to show strength. He might just get Jason to fold here, and actually, Jason's tournament life would be at stake if he called here, and this would be a bad call. Bad call because he's on the low end of the draw, and it is a draw. He's going to fold. All right, Robbie, that's our final hand of the night here on the HBT. Ryan is going to be the winner of that pot, but I've got to ask you, the real story is what happened to Jason. Tell you what, James, he started out as our chip leader tonight, then he went on a little bit of a tear, started accumulating chips, then he started to play too many hands, and that's why he doesn't have as many chips anymore. Folks, I want to remind you to join us next week right here on the HBT as we will conclude our broadcast from St. Louis here at the River City Casino and Hotel, and we're going to crown our new champion. That person will go home with almost $96,000. Now, if you're watching this and you think you have what it takes to compete right here at the national level, why not? give it a shot head on over to our webpage at hptpoker.com and who knows maybe you'll be playing for the life-changing cash for robert williamson the third i'm james larson and we'll see you next time right here on the hpt